All right, this is our last look at conductors with Gauss's law, and we're looking um, looking at planar symmetry this time. So a, a an infinitely long planar conductor. Uh, a real life example of this would be pretend that we have a desk made out of metal, just a big metal slab, and we put a charge on top of that slab. Well then, that charge distributes itself over the slab. And if we wanted to look at the electric field right here at this point, we could consider the table to be so long as to be infinite compared to this distance. That's what we're talking about with an infinitely charged slab. Now this is going to give us interesting, uh, interesting symmetry to look at. So we'll just look at that first, and then we'll get into calculating the electric field inside and outside of this conductor. So. This is planar symmetry. So we have a very long slab that continues in this direction. It continues off into this direction. It continues forward. This is a cross section for where we're at right now. Um, we're going to say that on the top surface, we have sigma charge per unit area. Same thing on the bottom surface. We have an equal amount of sigma charge per unit area. Let's say it's positive this time because of the fact that it's infinitely long, we see the electric field just pointing up at all points from this thing, as far back as it goes. So, and then down on the other side, moving further and further back into this thing. So, what we're wanting to do is to, to construct, to think of some surface that's going to give me a nice amount of, of symmetry to deal with. So we want a flat surface on top here. We'll just say it's a cylinder. We want a flat surface on top that these things are going to pass through. Um, let's say it extends down through this thing. And out the other side. This is what some books have called a Gaussian pillbox before. Um, let's see if I can do a better representation of that. Imagine this is a straight-on cross-section of the thing. We're going to put our Gaussian, sur our Gaussian surface such that it passes all the way through this thing. You know, and we have area on top, and we have area on the bottom. And the electric field is passing through both of those areas if that makes sense. And then right in here, pick a different color, right in here we have our enclosed charge, whatever's covered up by that area. That's what we're gonna look at. That's how we're gonna look at it. We're gonna say our slab has a thickness of, you need a better color, we're gonna say our slab has a thickness of D, and we're gonna look at the electric field outside of D and on the other side of D. Just as a note, we could build this pillbox in a different way and we might actually do that by putting one surface right in the middle and the other surface on the top. So that we can say we have an electric field that's equal to zero here because there's nothing on the inside of it. Um, and then just electric field passing through the top surface. We'll look at both ways. But this is the imaginary Gaussian surface that we're going to use here. Because it's an infinitely long plane, we don't even have to get fancy with this. We just have to enclose part of our charge. And we see that it's hitting us at 90 degrees. And since we're the same distance away from the top, um, that the angle is the same. So here's our planar surface. I'm going to redraw. I'm going to draw our first Gaussian thing on the inside. OK, there's my area there. There's my area there for my enclosed charge. Now, looking at this, um, again, we're calling this D. And, and we're going to the place where, well, at this point, R is less than D, R being the thickness of my box. So we're going to go back to closed E dot DA, DA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now, this being a conductor with positive sigma on the top and the bottom, 
we know that all the charge sits on the top and all the charge sits on the bottom and none of the charge sits in the middle. So inside the enclosed charge is zero. Whenever that happens, our electric field is zero. At this point, I'm going to make a definitive statement about conductors. Um, the electric field in any conductor inside of a conductor any conductor you can think of in an electrostatic state, not with things moving, but the electric field inside of a conductor is zero. Always, because the charge is always on the outside. Okay, So anytime we're inside of a conductor, the electric field is zero. On the next couple of videos, we're going to move on to insulators, where we have charge spread out throughout the thing. But inside of a conductor, it's going to be zero. Next, we're going to look at R is greater than well, if R measures from here to here, R is greater than D over 2. We're outside. R is less than D over 2. Okay, so my R is going to go from here to here. I'm going to place one surface of my Gaussian box in here. I'm going to go on the outside. I'm going to be out here, outside of my box with my surface. Okay, that's the surface we're talking about that the electric field will be passing through. So. Again, we start with Gauss's law. E dot dA is equal to my enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Now, there are six surfaces that go with this particular box, bottom sides and the top. But based on the way we have it constructed and what we know about the electric field that's pointing straight up off of this is that there is no electric field from these sides here and there's no electric field going through the bottom, so really it's just the electric field going through the top. And we know it's constant there, so it's E times, well, just the area of the top. It doesn't matter what that shape is. And that's going to be equal to the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Now, the enclosed charge is the charge inside of this box. Well, we only have one surface inside of there. It's charge 2 plus sigma and it's enclosed by an area of A. So our enclosed charge really is just sigma times the area of our imaginary Gaussian box divided by epsilon naught. So on one side of this thing, see that A goes away? My electric field is just sigma over epsilon naught. Now this is an interesting result. What it means is no matter how far away we get above this infinite sheet, the electric field is constant. Imagine that. If it's an infinitely long charged sheet, no matter how high up you get, you're always going to see the same amount of sheet. It's huge. So you're going to have a constant electric field that just depends on the charge. So looking at that charged sheet uh, head on, you would see a constant electric field at all points pointing up and pointing down constant, not changing no matter how far away from the sheet that you got. That's what we get from planar symmetry. This is our easiest case, but it's a little harder to see that so-called Gaussian pillbox. But that's all we've got.